Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg and I'm here today to talk about the shortlist for the International Booker Prize for 2023. This is really exciting. So the shortlist was actually announced yesterday and unfortunately yesterday as I am filming this is was a day uh, of travel. We were uh, out of town, uh, getting some care for our dog. Uh, if you follow along, you're aware of the whole situation. But so because of that, I was able to see the shortlist, but I didn't manage to film a video about it. So I'm recording this a day later than I usually would. It's fine. Everything will be fine. So I, I am really happy to talk about this. I went back and I peeked at my reaction to the long list, which will be linked down below. And I encourage you to check that out if you want more information about the books, because I, I spent a lot of time in that video going through all of the books that were on the long list and talking about what they're about and all of that. So I will cover that a little bit with the ones that are on the short list. Uh, but if you want a lot of detail about the books, uh, check out that video. And I, I sort of confirmed to myself that there were really four books that I gravitated toward off of the long list. And of those four books, three of them made it to the short list, which is really exciting. One thing I really like about the International Booker long list and following it is that I look at long lists and short lists as tools of discovery. They help me find books that I might not otherwise find. It sometimes, of course, obviously, there are books and authors that are real big heavy hitters and popularly known, but there are also some debut authors and uh, just books that haven't been getting big marketing campaigns. And the International Booker is really good because sometimes these international translated books don't get the spotlight that a lot of other books and authors do. Uh, so it's nice to have a prize that points specifically toward them. I've been reading more translated fiction in recent years, and uh, I've, I've really been enjoying that. So it, it is a good uh, tool for discovery for me. So I went through every book in the long list in the video that is linked down below. And the four books that I immediately gravitated to were Stillborn, Pyre, Boulder, and Time Shelter. And three of those books are here. I'll talk a little bit about the books that didn't make it onto the shortlist a little later. Let's just start by going through the books that made it. And I will have a link to the Booker website down below as well if you would like to check this out and get more information for yourself. Uh, the website does provide some handy little facts about uh, the shortlist, and I'll read those for you right now. First, Books that explore the challenges of motherhood, the struggles of undocumented workers, and the dangers of nostalgia are featured. There is a distinctly Korean take on Great Expectations, plus novels by the Grand Dame of Caribbean Literature and a Proust from the East. It includes the first nominations for books translated from Bulgarian and Catalan. I, I assume they mean shortlisted. Uh, and a wife and husband author translator team. There is also one translator and one author who have been recognized by the prize before. And there is a book that was published in its original language almost 20 years ago. I believe that is Whale. Uh, because I think that was originally published in 2004, but it was only recently translated into English. And there is work by three poets, a film director, and a former security guard. And there are two debuts and one final novel, the latter by the oldest writer ever to be shortlisted. I think that is Maurice Conde. Um, and the, the works originate in six different countries. Now, let's dive in and start talking about them. The first book to talk about is Stillborn. And this is one of the books that I've heard the most about since the long list was announced. One thing is because not all of these books are available in the United States and I have some other reading things going on this year. A lot of these books I ultimately decided to sort of hold off on and uh, wait until the see if they made it onto the shortlist and see what books really got people talking. And Stillborn was one of the ones that immediately grabbed my attention, but it wasn't immediately available, so I kind of put it to the side. However, I have gotten some feedback in uh, recent Friday Reads videos from people who have read it and uh, really enjoyed it a lot. So I'm really excited even more about this one, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if it makes it to the win. So the winner will be announced on May 23rd, and it'll be interesting to see what happens with this one. It seems like this is a book that a lot of people have gravitated toward and are enjoying. So Stillborn is by Guadalupe Nettle, translated by Rosalind Harvey, and I'm not going to do the whole blurb, but what they say is Guadalupe Nettle's gripping and insightful fourth novel explores one of life's most consequential decisions, whether or not to have children. I think that's a really interesting conversation to have. I appreciate that a lot of people have been having it. Um, and 
I, I, I think it is also it's a deeply personal decision. And when you read the longer description, it seems like it, it could be a little bit triggering if, say, you've had difficulty uh, becoming a parent. Or, But I, I, I think questions of parenthood are really interesting. I, I, a friend of my father's, who was my father's mentor uh, when he first started out in his career, um, once told me that one of the most consequential decisions you can make in your life is if to if you become a parent and when. And it's very true. Um, so I've enjoyed getting some good positive feedback about this one, and this is definitely one that I would like to read for myself. And I look forward to tracking down a copy of it at some point. Um, I, I can't remember if it is actually released in the United States right now. I don't think it is. Okay, I took a peek on bookshop.org, and it looks like uh, Stillborn will be released in the United States on August 8th of 2023. Of course, the way the world works right now, you don't have to wait until then. Um, you could order a copy from the UK. But uh, if you would rather wait, looks like August in the United States. And that is probably why I haven't immediately sought out a copy of it right now. I'm trying to manage how much I bring into my house. The next book that made the shortlist is Standing Heavy by Gauze. This is translated by Frank Wynn. This was another one that had really grabbed my attention uh, off of the long list. Um, it wasn't one of the main four that I kind of focused in on, but it was something that sounded really interesting. And the quick blurb about it is a unique insight into everything that passes under a security guard's gaze, which also serves as a searingly witty deconstruction of colonial legacies and capitalist consumption. It is framed as a satire, and satire is something that people have very knee-jerk reactions to. Uh, there are a lot of people who just don't like satire at all. That's fine. Um... If that is the case for you, this probably would not be the book for you. I think it sounds really interesting. Um, and actually, while I'm talking, let me just take a peek and see on Bookshop if it is released in the U.S. I think that is why I didn't Im immediately grab a copy of that as well. Yeah, it does. it's not coming up on Bookshop, so I'm assuming it's not released in the United States right now. But again, you can order a copy. I'm just trying not to order too many things right now. Uh, but this is definitely something that I'm really interested in. I, I, I think the idea of deconstructing colonial legacies, capitalist consumption, that all sounds really interesting. And satire is probably a good format for that. Um, the author also sounds like a really interesting person. Uh, their, their quick about the author on the website is that he is an Ivoirian author and journalist, the editor-in-chief of a satirical economic newspaper, and ha he has also written screenplays and documentary films. I mean, what a resume. So definitely this is a book that I'm interested in and one that I'm happy to have seen advance to the shortlist. The next one is Time Shelter, written by Georgi Gospodinov and translated by Angela Riddell. The quick blurb that they have about this is, A clinic for the past offers a promising treatment for Alzheimer's sufferers. Each floor reproduces a decade in, my, decade in minute detail, transporting patients back in time. And then I believe in the longer blurb, it sort of explains that even people who are not suffering from Alzheimer's start uh, reaching back for the past and longing for that uh, experience themselves. So it is kind of about um, the appeal of the past and how you can kind of get lost in it. It sounds like a really interesting book. And this is probably the other book off of the long list that I have heard people read the most and enjoy. Uh, definitely Stillborn and Time Shelter. Those are the two books that I have heard people talking about in comments on my Friday Reads videos uh, and mentioning that they have read. So they are definitely the ones that people have uh talked to me about the most. And I think it's important to note that, uh, you know, just because people commented on these books on my videos doesn't mean that they're the ones that the majority of people are gravitating for. But I do think it's interesting that they are the ones that uh, people have followed up on with me the most. Um, and that definitely, it definitely sounds like a book that is interesting. Let me take a quick peek. I believe this one either is released in the U.S. or has a date to be released in the United States. I'm double checking on Bookshop right now. Here we go. Time Shelter was released on May 10th, 2022 uh, in the United States. So it is currently available in the US if you would like to seek it out. Uh, I recommended that my library purchase a copy and they have not at this moment. So I'm kind of hoping that they'll catch up to it. Maybe I'll put in another request now that it's on the shortlist. Um, but the next book, 
is The Gospel According to the New World. This is written by Maurice Conde and translated by Richard Philcox. I believe he is her husband as well. And I, I believe she has actually lost her sight. And uh, I believe he also, uh, she transcribed the book to him, um, which is another interesting development in how it was produced. The quick blurb for this is a miracle baby is rumored to be the child of God. Award-winning Caribbean author Maurice Conde follows his journey in search of his origins and mission. This one could be interesting. My reaction to it was very muted because I feel like it's maybe not a book for me. In the book, there's a sort of question about whether or not this is a child of God or not. And maybe it gets into questions of faith. Um, that is something that can be interesting to me, but it really depends on how it's handled. So part of me is also waiting for feedback on it, but I haven't gotten a whole lot. And the part that I have gotten was a enthusiastic, but also muted. And for that reason, this book really hasn't changed in my estimation. It seems like a book that sounds very interesting, but maybe not for me. So I'm not really seeking it out or waiting for it or anything like that. Um, I do think there is probably a good chance that it will end up winning this year. I'm not really going to get into predictions, but I, I, I would say knee-jerk reaction to the shortlist. This seems like it's in a very good position to win, especially with Maurice Conde's standing as an author, being the grand dame of Caribbean literature, and the fact that we probably aren't going to get another book from her. Um, it just seems like... A perfect storm to reward her for this book and that would be fine but I, there are definitely other books on the short list that I personally would gravitate toward first so it is what it is and then we have Whale written by Chion Myung Kwan and translated by Chi Young Kim the quick blurb that they have is an adventure satire of epic proportions, which sheds new light on the changes Korea experienced in its rapid transition from pre-modern to post-modern society. And this is the book that was originally published in 2004 um, and was only just recently translated, which is a sort of interesting situation that can happen to translated books. And it does sound really interesting. I had not heard the comparison to Great Expectations. I assume that this is the book that that sort of tease, uh, like the facts about the shortlist, um, is referring to as a great expectations, um, sort of spinoff. Uh, I, I didn't quite get that from the description of the book the first time. It does make it a little bit interesting. And I think my memory of it is that the quick descriptions of this book sound really interesting to me, but once you get into, um, the description, it sounds a little weird, if I remember correctly. I'm sort of skim skimming through. So there is a car yeah, there's a, a one-eyed woman who controls honeybees with a whistle. Um, so it sounds, on the one hand, like it could be very interesting, and on the other hand, it sounds like it has a lot of kind of quirky details, and that kind of makes me hesitate. And I had kind of thought that I would end up hearing more about this book after the long list was announced, but I haven't seen a whole lot of feedback about it. And, you know, again, that doesn't mean that there, people aren't reading it and aren't talking about it. Certainly that is happening. It just hasn't been getting back to me too much right now. And because of that, it's been sort of lingering in that uh, place where it sounds interesting, but I need more information before I would think about committing to whether or not I will read it myself. Um, but it sounds interesting for sure. And the final book that is on the shortlist is Boulder. This one is written by Ava Baltazar and translated by Julia Sanchez. I actually requested a copy of this at my library because this is currently released in the United States and they bought it. So it is currently at the library waiting for me to pick it up. And because I've been out of town for such a long time, today is my last day to pick it up. So I have to race to the library to pick this one up and another book that was on the long list. Uh, so I will actually be getting a copy of this book from my library, hopefully today. And I am hoping to read it. This is probably the one off of the long list that jumped out to me the hardest. And I'm really glad to see that it made it to the shortlist for that reason. Here's the quick blurb. Ava Baltazar demonstrates her preeminence as a chronicler of queer voices navigating a hostile world in prose as brittle and beautiful as an ancient saga. And when you get into the longer description, which again, I'm not going to get into here, but if you want more about each book, please check out the long list reaction that will be linked down below. Um, 
it explains that it is about a lesbian who meets another woman and they get into a relationship and then her partner wants to become a mother. And it's about that sort of tension um, between loving someone and trying to figure out how to match their wants into your life. But it also kind of goes back to that question about motherhood and whether or not you want to become a parent that we sort of see with Stillborn, uh, with Guadalupe Nettle. So there's an interesting conversation happening with the first and last books that made it onto the shortlist. And uh, they seem like they have very different approaches, very different thematic content. But uh, it is interesting that there are two books on this shortlist that are sort of having that conversation. I find that very interesting. And of the two, I'm very interested in both of them. But, of uh, you know, me being me, I immediately gravitate toward the queer one. And I am very much looking forward to reading this. It's a very short book, too. I don't don't think it's much over 100 pages at all. So hopefully it will be a very quick read. And this will be the first book from the long list and the short list that well, I will end up reading. And for that reason, you know, obviously I'm kind of rooting for it because I'm that interested in reading it. But we'll see what happens once I have actually read it. I don't want to make any kind of commitments <laughs> to it uh, before that. So looking at the books that did not make it to the shortlist, the one that I was most interested in was Pyre by Paramal Marugan, translated by Anna Rudin Vasudhavadan. And uh, I actually also requested that book at my library, and they also purchased it. This is wild to me, because I request purchases at my library all the time. And this is only the second and third time over a span of years that they have actually made a purchase that I recommended. And it, it's a, a constant source of frustration for me because a lot of times people will comment on my videos and say, you should just request these at your library. And it's like, I, I do that all the time. They don't purchase my books, the ones that I recommend. For whatever reason, it just doesn't usually happen. It's only happened one other time in the past, and now it's happened twice. So that's really lucky, and I, you know, makes me happy, certainly. So uh, hopefully I will be able to pick up Pyre today. Uh, obviously, because I was so excited about it or interested in it, I'm a, a little sad it didn't make it onto the shortlist. But you really can't argue too much. It does seem like a very solid long list and short list. These are very interesting and diverse books. I'm never going to argue with that. I will say Gospel According to the New World is not a book that I gravitate toward immediately. So if I, sight unseen without having actually read the books, were devising my own short list, I probably would have swapped that one out for Pyre. But again, I haven't read the books. And I'm not trying to review them. I'm not trying to um, make a, a de declaration about what opinion about these books is right or wrong. Even if I had read all of these books, your opinion on them may differ from mine. That's fine. Uh, but I'm not trying to review these books. I'm just reacting to them based on whether or not I would read them. And that's all. And looking at the other books that had been on the long list that did, that did not make it, I'm a little surprised Ninth Building did not make it. I It seemed like... A lot of people were very interested in that book based on the long list reaction that I did. Um, so it could have seemed like it had momentum, but you know, when you have a strong long list, there are going to be tough choices, and maybe that was just one of them. Uh, there was also A System So Magnificent It Is Blinding. Uh, there was also While We Were Dreaming, uh, The Birthday Party, and, and uh, I'm a little surprised Jimi Hendrix Live in Lviv did not make it because that one is by a Ukrainian author, and... Um, with everything going on in the world, and specifically in Ukraine right now, it could have seemed um, likely that they would want to support a Ukrainian voice or a Ukrainian author. Um, turns out that was not the case. But again, when you have a very strong and interesting long list, difficult decisions will have to be made somewhere. And that was probably one of them. And then the final one is, is Mother Dead? I have seen some people talking about some of those books, uh, not too many of them. Um, so I, I can't quite argue with the short list that they worked out from this list. But I would love to hear what you think about this short list. Is there a book that did not make it that you think should have? Which book are you most excited about? Which ones are you reading? Have you read? And which ones are you rooting for? Let me know and we will find out on May 23rd which one of these books 
wins the International Booker Prize for 2023. Stay tuned because next week we will get the shortlist for the Women's Prize, and I'm really looking forward to finding out which books make it on that list. And I will be doing a reaction. And now that I'm home, it's good to be home. It's really good to be home. Uh, hopefully, I will be able to film that shortlist reaction on the day that the shortlist is announced. And we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, hopefully, now that I'm home, things will be kind of returning to normal in terms of, you know, video production and all of that. Um, but we shall see how all of that goes. And I'll talk a lot more in this week's Friday Reads video about the trip and all of that. And... Um, yeah, stay tuned for that. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about the shortlist once again in the comment section down below. And as always, I really appreciate your time and I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.